to watch in business morning coming to you on channels television you can join the conversation by the social media community you know our list of twitter handles at channel cv or at base morning or at bolaji akiwale harry tagbe as well is uh, you can also get to reach her at harry tagbe while bolson is still away you can join him at bolson business it's now time to look at the energy market harry tagbe is right here uh, to take us through the numbers and, of course, what's going on in that market. Hello, Harriet. Hello, Bolaji. That's right. Well, we know that uh, the oil and gas uh, index, uh, well, the stocks, particularly on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, have not been faring particularly well. It's been very strong headwinds for them. And so the first half of the year has seen that... Um, Oil and gas stocks have not performed very well. But looking at yesterday's trade, oil and gas index dropped about 0.55%. On Monday, we saw it down about 0.4% as a result of price depreciations in uh, Mobile, Total, Owando, and Con Oil. Well, now, Con Oil succumbed to fresh sell off pressure, uh, was off about 9.74, closing at 36 Naira, 87 Kobo, about 100. And 18,000 shares were actually traded. Now, this happened after sideways trading in the last 11 weeks on mixed settlements from investors and shareholders. So let's take a look at the list of other stocks that traded at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Yes, it has oil and gas stocks. We have 40 oil. 40 oil was the only uh, equity that actually appreciated. It added uh, about 2 0.11 percent uh, closing at 194 naira about 184,174 of that equity was actually traded by investors yesterday investors have continuously put their eyes so like Boston always says 40 oil is the poster boy for the oil and gas index not doing badly at, at all on Monday was the same thing We'll keep an eye on that particular equity. Mobile shared about 3.83%, closing at 150 Nara 1 Cobo investors, traded about 116,157 of that particular equity. Let's flip over. MRS, still no trade in that particular equity. It's still no movement, flat as it is, still at 49 Nara 66 Cobo. Of course, uh, analysts have been... Uh, um, talking about where this particular equity lies at the moment, it's not very clear of what's actually happening to MRS oil, but we'll keep an eye on that story. Owando uh, closed 1.73% um, south, closing at 11 Naira 90 Cobo. Now, interestingly, uh, Owando actually released its uh, financial results for the first half of the year. We'll be talking more uh, about that, but some key highlights of uh, that particular uh, result, uh, key financial and operational highlights, according to the company, was that uh, production increased to about um, 5.2 million barrels of equivalent, as uh, an average of uh, 56,917. And net revenue was up $90.2 million in the first quarter of, uh, or the second quarter, I beg your pardon, of the year, showing an increase of uh, about 59.8 million earned in the second quarter of um, 2014. Um, of course, in the news as well, one of the top trending stories, but just before I get to that, a daily return uh, is at uh, minus 0.5%. Um, of course, uh, lackluster results have actually resulted in showing, uh, in uh, dragging that down and not so unconnected to the fact that uh, we saw uh, price appreciations in Mobile, Total, Owando, and Con Oil at the end of Tuesday's trade at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So, year to date is minus 15.4%. Price earnings uh, in positive 7.8%, and dividend yield is 3.1%. Now, in the news, of course, uh, Bolaji actually mentioned that we have oil prices uh, actually fluctuating on the global scene uh, down about uh, 49.88 uh, cents as of yesterday. Well, as of this morning, 50, $50.33 cents per barrel. That's a little was scary at this time, especially since the uh, benchmark for the oil price in the 2015 budget is about $55. A major training story at this time is the appointment of a new helmsman at NMPC. President Muhammadu Buhari appointed Dr. Imano Kachiku, the executive vice chairman and general counsel of ExxonMobil Africa, as group managing director of the NMPC. He takes over from Dr. Joseph Tamadawa. Now, he assumes, as Dr. Kachiku assumes office at a very crucial time, there have been comments and allegations of missing or unremitted funds. The different reports have hit the news wire about this, and more than a few debates have been had about how best to run 
the NNPC. Now, we know that uh, Dr. Kachi, Kachiku is, um, oh, excuse me, I need to just quickly, is an expert in petroleum law and practice, a graduate of law from the University of Nigeria, and has a master's and doctorate's degree in law from Harvard Law School. He's also a former banker. But let's bring in Dolapo Ni Head Energy Research, Ecobank Development Corporation, Nigeria, to talk more about this. Hello, Dolapo, and thank you so much for joining me on the program. Good morning, Amin. Good to be on the show. Well, Dolapo, one of the trending stories right now is a new helmsman at the NNPC, Dr. Emmanuel Kachiku. Let me quickly run you through his marching orders from the president. He is to clean up the NNPC system of corrupt elements, recover all stolen crude oil funds, work with the EFCC and the Directorate of SSS to trace and recover stolen oil cash, as well as he's got about six tasks at hand already. Do you think he can cut it? I mean, I, I, I mean I'm not in the best position to say that. I believe the man that selected him for the job is definitely um, the one who can answer that question. But let me add this information that he was also, while in, while in ExxonMobil, he was also head of um, compliance and um, anti-corruption as well. Uh, which was the unit he also had as in uh, ExxonMobil as well. So I think one of the things that has um, really helped, um, you know, um, that city is Rocky Road in his selection for the job is the fact that this is a field he's quite familiar with. He's aware of all the laws, he's aware of the operations, and he's also someone that is driven by the need to ensure there's full compliance with the law and that there's no corrupt practices. So I think it would be you know, yeah, especially since we have uh, so many issues with regards missing funds, unremitted funds, for instance, and uh, the growing list of uh, corruption charges in the NMPC. So looking at it now, he comes in at a very crucial time where he has to do serious mopping up. Exactly. I think, I, I think and then again, the job is not really a job for one man alone. So I, I, I think it would be important to also see how the board is, um, the NMPC board is also reconstituted as well. Um, because I mean, one man would be one one good man at the top would not be enough. You know, when you look at all the issues, the various leakages that need to be blocked, um, the various things that need to be done, um, it would be interesting to see how the board is constituted and um, what role you know the rest of the industry also plays in constituting that board. Because this particular this particular selection has sort of given us a bit of an insight into what Buhari wants to try and do. Um, he wants professional clearly. He wants technical people, but he, he seems to also want to make sure that there are people that he can uh, that have some um, to some extent some similarity what what he's trying to achieve um, in that industry, which is to clear out the corruption. So I, I think this this um, selection actually shows that. Well, Dolapo, very quickly, we've fast spent for time. Let's talk about um, oil prices. As of this morning, oil prices are trading at fifty dollars thirty three cents. Uh, uh, for Monday and Tuesday, it dropped below $50 per barrel and caused a couple of uh, palpitations. Now, benchmark oil price for the 2015 budget is put at, what, $55 per barrel. Now we're seeing what's going on on the global uh, scene with regards to oil prices. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, well, the, the general trend is still downward because um, everybody is still ramping up production. We're still seeing some very um, high value volumes coming out of OPEC countries, Saudi Arabia, managed to push production up to 10.6. Uh, Iran, Iraq is also pushing up production. Iran is trying to push the ramp of production. Um, there are all the issues in U.S. as well. U.S. is also have pushing up production as well. So the fact that there's still a lot of supply volumes in the market, I think that that, that, that could still um, push prices down below 50. But I don't think they will stay below 50. Well, I likely, we're likely to stay in this 48 to 55 range for a bit of a, for a while. Hmm. And so that means, uh, finger crossed on how it's going to likely be affecting our coffers. But Dolakwa, thank you so much. Uh, we have to leave it here for this time. Of course, we'll be having another okay. conversation with you uh, tomorrow, still on the oil market. Thank you. Well, Balaji, the market is causing more than a few palpitations, I agree. But then, fingers crossed, uh, let's hope for the best. Yes, we hope that uh, the prices of oil in the international market will be to the favor of countries like Nigeria who, we need are, the money, still, actually. Yes, who are still <laughs> having to export. But the sad thing is that we import. Oh. We pay more to import, apart from exporting and, and earning revenues from this. But we still have to import refined crude. 
well, that's, that's where the real. problem has been. And uh, Dr. Kachiku the has a lot of work on his hand because mm. there's been so many issues with regards uh, uh, crude for oil sales and the rest of it. In fact, he's got a very, very long thing coming. A whole lot of work to do. Uh, Harriet, thank you so much. Thank I you. do appreciate your time with us uh, at the moment on the program. Harriet Agbengi, they're giving us uh, the latest happenings at the energy market. Okay, if we have been able to connect with um, Harrison Owo, he is a BBC operator. Yesterday, he told us on the program that the, dollars, the dollar is beginning to appreciate against the Naira. Now, on Monday, we saw that the Naira was selling for between 215 to 216 against the greenback at the parallel market window of uh, the forex market. Uh, we'll give you updates as regards uh, what's going on right now once we're able to... Uh, Get in touch with uh, Mr. Harrison Owo. We'll go on a break. And when we come back, it's time to begin to look into Nigeria's housing market. Um, do you have a home? What do you think it will take you to get one if you don't have? We'll be joined uh, when we come back by Mr. Kesta Isiadi. He is the CEO of Contemporary Group. After the break.